Hi everyone, this is Brandon Yelts from the implementation team and today I'm going to be going over how to install SalesPad. So what we see on the desktop right now is a SalesPad installer. And this can be provided to you via our support team or the portal. So in order to uh, launch the installer, obviously I can just double click on it. Now SalesPad can be installed uh, locally on a user's machine. It can also be installed on a terminal server. Um, it can be installed on the SQL server as well. Um, and some people can even do like a Citrix server as well. Um, we do not support uh, Apple devices. So SalesPad desktop cannot be installed directly on a MacBook or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click yes there. <clears throat> Uh, we do have the installer language, so SalesPad can be installed in three different languages, as we see here. Next is just our end user license agreement. So I'm going to go ahead and hit I agree. Next is the install location. So by default, SalesPad will install um, to the C drive under the program files x86 directory. And that can be changed by just clicking the Browse button. I'm going to click Next here. Um, these are choosing components here, so I can choose if I want to um, configure the installer uh, shortcuts here as well. Typically, we'll just leave those as defaulted. And I'm going to click the Install button. And so now this is going to go through and just really install the software. Once our installer is complete, um, there is a screen where you can view our release notes for this version. Um, you can also click on this link and it'll take you out to our website. And then if this is checked, it will automatically launch SalesPad Desktop. I'm gonna uncheck that. So once SalesPad has been installed, you'll see that it'll put a desktop icon on my desktop. So what I can do from here is then just double click on the icon and this will begin to launch SalesPad. So when I launch SalesPad for the first time, you'll notice that all my information here is blank. So now what we're going to do is create a connection to the database. And I can create that connection to the database by clicking the plus sign here under add new connection. And this will pull up the SQL Server Connection screen. So the first field that we see here is a connection. So within here, this is what we'll want the users to see when they're logging into SalesPad. So what they want to name their connection. So you could do uh, the test company. Some people will just do the company name. Or you can actually, in brackets, put the word test or really anything you want and then your company name. Putting the word test in between the two brackets under the connection field will actually change the background of SalesPad. So indicating you that you're logging into the test company, it'll actually be like a brownish color where if you don't put the brackets on, it'll just use our, our standard SalesPad skin. The next field that we have here is the server. So this will actually be the physical name of the SQL Server itself. If you are installing it directly onto the SQL Server, you can do parentheses and just do local, what you see I did here. Or from the drop down, you can actually choose the physical um, server name. You can type it in as well. Um, sometimes the server name might not show up, so you can also do the IP address. So in this specific example, um, in the server field, I'm going to type in my actual PC name. So wind-106 there. And in the SQL Server authentication field, I'm going to type in my SQL SA username and password. And if this is typed in properly, if I click the company database, this will actually show you all the different uh, databases that SalesPad can be installed against. So in my scenario, I'm going to choose, I have my company database that, that I have GP installed against, SPDB. Now down below is the connection stored for, and this is pretty important. So right now you'll notice it'll default to current user. 
And what, that would be useful to do current user if it's just installed on a local machine. However, if you're operating in a terminal server, Citrix server environment, if I click this drop down, you'll see that there is an option for local machine. And so what that'll do is once you create this connection once, anyone who logs into that server will have access that, to that connection. In order to be able to choose local machine, you will need to launch SalesPad as the administrator. So you'll notice if I choose local machine right now, it's gonna throw a pop-up and telling me that in order to save that connection, SalesPad needs to be run as administrator. <clears throat> I'm not gonna do that now, but if you guys would want to do it in the future, just right click on SalesPad when you launch it and do run as administrator. And so now I'm ready to install SalesPad against my company database. Now when logging in for the first time, all you should have to do is click the OK button. And this is gonna pull up a screen to install SalesPad desktop. So this is just a screen right here that's you know, giving you some information about the, the installer. And I'm gonna hit the next button here. Now at the top, this I have made a backup and would like to continue checkbox will need to be checked in order to be able to click this next button. But this is just a, a precautionary you know, making sure that you've made a backup of the database. Update user fields, that's grayed out because a brand new install, you don't have any user defined fields. And then down below is just, this is the section where you'll just put in the SQL SA username and password again. This is saying I, I have the, the correct rights to install SalesPad or do a database update against this database. And I'll click next. Now on a brand new install, it's gonna ask you to create the SalesPad uh, administrator's password. The user will default to SA, and so for the password, I'm just gonna use SA as well. And we'll click next here. And this is gonna go through our database update. So this is going to be installing SalesPad against this database. So we're currently installing all of our SalesPad business objects, our tables, our views, and our store procedures. So now our database update has been completed and we have the message at the top saying that the database update was successful. So next I'm gonna click on the next button. Oh, after the install is done, you do have the ability to load some default security groups. So SalesPad has the, a default CSR manager purchasing and sales security group. So these groups really allow you, so you, you know, you kind of have a base um, for your, your customer service people or your purchasing group. Um, makes it so you're not having to go through all of the security. And then you do have the ability to choose demo users as well. So if you want to set up like a demo user, that's what these checkboxes would be for. And we're going to click next on there. And our install has been completed. And we'll click finish. And if I put in that SA username and password I created, we should see that now I have the ability to log into my company. And like I mentioned earlier too, since I put the brackets in between tests, we can see the background of my sales pad is brown. That's it for the install and connection setup of sales pad. Thanks for watching the video.